In this video, we're going to cover the Engage Blocks option. So we have the Engage Blocks part file open. We're going to take a look at sketch one. So one thing you'll notice is this looks very similar to when we created belt and pulley assembly. We have three circular entities that are sketch blocks, have a line that kind of signifies the rotation angle of them. So you'll notice that two of these entities are actually fixed. So the larger one here and the center one here on the origin. This third one is free to float around in space. The engage blocks option is a relation that you can add that signifies things like friction. So in the case of a belt and a pulley, when we use that engage block option, we're actually creating friction between the pulley and the path. Even though the path doesn't move, SolidWorks knows that when you move one entity, you actually want to move all the entities in that path. The engage blocks option creates friction between the two. So for instance, if we take the side of this sketch block and the side of this one, we can use that engage blocks option. And when we rotate this around, we're actually rotating both of them. Now this one's still free to move around, so we want to do an engage block option with the other one as well. So now we've easily created an assembly of three different, in this case, we'll just assume that they're gears and use that relation to create the motion between them. Now this can be used in several different ways. I mean, we can add other sketch blocks to these. For instance, let's create a sketch block for each one of these lines. So we'll go ahead and make block for each of these. And then let's go ahead and add this to one of the entities. We'll bring this guy over and we'll just fix him in space. So you can see as we're turning this around, we're actually creating the motion for the rest of this. Let's go ahead and move it just a little bit closer so we get our full motion. You can see this allows us to create relations and linkages that signify a gear assembly. And this is great because we can do things like we can add a horizontal reference line that is fixed and we can add an angular dimension between here. We can make that angular dimension driven just like we did for our shock length and our pliers. So now we can rotate this around and we can see the extent of the angles that we can get with our linkage assembly. So this is a very easy way to create gear driven assemblies that could be complicated or fairly simple. And there's another thing that this is good for as well. So let's delete these extra links here. Let's go ahead and create one more thing. So I'm gonna just create a rectangle here. And this rectangle, we're gonna create a block out of. And then we're gonna add some relations. We're gonna make sure that this stays horizontal and we're gonna bring this guy up and we're gonna make it tangent. And then we wanna create a engage block option. So now what we've just created is a rack and pinion assembly between these two. Because as we rotate this upper block, you can see that we've created that rack and pinion motion between the lower gear. So this is a really easy way for you to do things like create this motion and figure out how big each of your members actually needs to be. Because once you create that, you can modify it and see what kind of motion you get. So we know that we're not even getting half a turn out of this thing and the entire assembly here has moved off to the side. So again, a very easy way to use sketch blocks, create this motion of a gear assembly or rack and pinion assembly, figure out exactly the kind of requirements you need to get the motion that you want before you've ever created any parts. And then after that, you can use this information to do things like extrude. So we can take this sketch, we can take single entities or we can grab multiple entities by using the selected contours option and create our geometry that's solid based on those sketches. So then we can always go back to that original sketch and this original sketch block. And let's say that we needed to make this inch and a half. It's gonna re-engage itself and it's gonna modify itself and trickle down into any solid geometry that's based on it. That concludes the video on engage blocks.